Hi guys, um, so far we've seen different types of scheduling problems and we've seen different performance measures that we may be interested in minimizing or, or maximizing and what we're going to do in this video is to explore different solution strategies, approaches that we have to solve these problems or at least to come up with solutions that are reasonably uh, good. Um, mainly there are three different approaches. The first one are exact methods, uh, algorithms that give us the best solution exactly. And unfortunately, we don't have many of these. And the, the ones we have only work for very simple cases, cases that are very small, like two, three, four machines, and for a certain specific performance measure. So unfortunately, we haven't been able to derive exact methods for general problems at all. And in many cases, the only way to make sure that we are going to get the optimum solution is by doing an exhaustive search, by looking at every possible solution. And that, as we have seen, um, is, is unfeasible in many cases because the solution space um, scales really badly. The second approach that we're going to, to explore in this video in particular is to use heuristic methods or priority rules. These are rules that are very simple to apply, but um, they don't usually give us very good solutions. Why do we explore these priority rules here in this course? Well, basically because they're used in many, many firms and, and to be aware that these are not very good solutions, okay? And the last approach, which is the one we're going to focus in this course, is the use of metaheuristic methods. And this is also called the stochastic optimization, and this is what we're going to work on in this course. Some examples are iterative local search, simulated annealing, genetic algorithms, taboo search, and so on. But in this video, let us focus on the, on the priority rules, okay? There are many, as we said, and we're, we're just going to see some of them, the, the most popular. Okay, the first one looks at the total slack. What, what is the total slack? The total slack is the difference between the time that we have to process a job uh, to, to be able to deliver it on time and the time that we need. The, the, the time we, we have to process it is the difference between the due date and the actual date and the time that we would need to finish a job is the processing time of the remaining operations. So the slack is, is how much slack we have to, to finish this job uh, on time. And what we're going to do at, at a certain machine, when we have a queue with, with many jobs, um, what we're going to do is to sort them in increasing order of slack. And we're going to do first those, job, those jobs that have lower slack, okay? Those that we really, we really have to process, it, process them soon or we won't be able to deliver them on time. Naturally, if we already have a job in the queue that has negative slack, that job is not going to be delivered um, in time. The critical ratio priority rule is extremely similar to the total slack, but instead of looking at the slack in absolute terms, like the total slack, we're going to look at it in relative terms. So basically, we're going to divide the time that we have to finish the job uh, by the due date by the time that we need. And again, if this number is less than one, we're going to be late. But the idea is the same as before. We're going to sort the jobs that we have in the queue in increasing order of the critical ratio. And we're going to deal with those with the lower critical ratio first. Other priority rules that are very common is a shortest processing time. We talked about this one briefly in a previous video. Basically, it 
what we're gonna do is to deal with those jobs that have the shortest processing time first okay and the opposite rule would be the longest processing time then there's also the common rules of FIFO and LIFO sometimes FIFO in this context is sometimes called first come first served and LIFO last come first served uh, very common rules in engineering another rule that some people use in their daily lives is earliest due date and basically it means that when we have this queue we're gonna deal with the job that has the earliest due date first this obviously has many problems because mm, uh, jobs that have um, due dates not very soon but may take a long time to process will will be waiting there for for long in in the queue so this is this is not ideal by by any means another priority rule is is to deal with the jobs with the longer remaining processing time first so we take all those jobs um, out of the way as soon as possible another uh, priority rule could look at the jobs with the highest economic value at some point and try to finish those as soon as possible another priority rule this one is more sophisticated because it it doesn't it's not purely local it does not look only at at the machine we're dealing with but also at the next machines and basically it consists in in looking at where each of the jobs is going to go next at which machine each of the jobs is going to go next and see how busy those next machines are if they're not very busy we should deal with those jobs first so so we reduce the idle times okay and as we mentioned this rule requires information of other machines too and and that is why it is more sophisticated and that is why it usually works better and another rule that some people use also in their daily life is just random just do whatever comes to your mind first these different priority rules can be classified according to different criteria for instance one criterion would be based on the objective they aim to achieve some of them they try to minimize the processing time of jobs some of them try to deliver the jobs by their due dates they can also be classified according to the amount of, of information they require there are local priority rules that they only look at information um, about the machine we're, we're dealing with and there are other machine other priority rules that require more information and some of them even global information and, and they usually work better obviously there is some according to their time dependency some priority rules are static so their the priority rule does not change with time but some are dynamic where the priority de depends on on time and, and in general what you have to understand is, is that these priority rules are, are rules to deal with queues within each machine. So in a way, it's a way of decentralizing the whole scheduling process and, and then making each machine responsible for dealing with, with their queues. And, and obviously each machine could use a different priority rule and usually these rules are not very good the best rule to use usually depends on the context the objectives the experience the information and and many many other factors but in general what you have to remember is that these priority rules though they're simple to apply they don't usually give very very good solutions so with this we finish this video and i look forward to seeing you in in the next one see you, see you in a couple of minutes